Well, hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be replacing the sprocket on the chainsaw bar. I was using this bar. It's a 32-inch bar. I've been using it for almost 12 years. And the end of it finally froze up. Uh, I went to the local dealer, picked up a new uh, nose sprocket for it. And in the process, I bought a couple of them. I went with steel because it's going to go on a steel bar. But there's so many other aftermarket ones out there that if you choose to go down that road, you can. Um, I don't. It cost me like $22 plus tax. And it came with everything. And I feel that the process of quality checks through steel are probably higher than some of these other knockoffs or uh, other options. Um, it is from their factory. It came with the stamps and everything. And we're going to go through all that. But we're going to do a couple things with it. And you don't need a whole lot of tools. Some of the stuff you're going to be needing is a drill with a drill bit that is going to fit over the rivet head. So when you drill the rivet head off on both sides, it will remove that and just leave the stem. Another is going to be a center hole punch. We have a little punch right here. This is going to serve two purposes. One, we're going to punch a hole in the middle of the existing rivet. And that's going to allow us not to walk all over when we use the drill and we go into a slow speed to drill that out. Number two, once we have the both sides drilled out, we're going to use this along with a bull peen hammer. And we're going to push the rest of the pin out of the uh, hole. And then we also have this bull peen hammer here. It's a dead blow. Uh, any, any style would be fine uh, with dead blow or traditional. What you're going to be doing is what we call is uh, sludging. And it is the art of taking a piece of metal and forming it to fit with another piece of metal when it's cold. Uh, it's an old uh, French term, and it's still used today for many things. So this isn't something new or uh, untested technology. This is it's so traditional and so uh, been tested throughout the years that it's not even funny. This is the packet that comes with it. You're going to get a new sprocket. You can tell right in here. Let me zoom in. I'm using my phone once again that you have the traditional steel symbol. Let's turn that around so you know that's right from them. The packet comes right there. And then you have the three little rivets. On the rivets is gonna be one flat side. And then you're gonna have a bevel on this side. So when you take the bull peen hammer and you're gonna sledge it, AKA hit it, it's gonna flatten out towards that divot elevation all right so here's here's the bar that we have she's been pretty used but not too bad we keep good condition on it we use uh we we file down the edges every so often to keep it uh, smooth and not cut it in your hands and it guides very well this technique is done we're going to do it right i said on this romantic es here and here's the sprocket right in here. And in here, it's, it's, it's solid. As solid can be. So what we're going to do first is you're going to take your chisel, center hole punch, and you're going to find the dead center of this, and you're going to punch all three of those out. Once that is done on both sides, then you're going to take your drill, handy-dandy drill, And you're going to go right on top and drill it out. With the power of a camera here and magic, we're going to have that taken care of. Bam. Magic. Right in here, I want to get a little pointer here somehow. Right in here, you can see that we kind of drilled a little further than we were supposed to. That's going to be okay because we're replacing this. This should come straight, straight on out. And inside of this cavity, you just want to make sure this is all clean. Then we're going to take the new sprocket. Here we go. Slide that puppy on there. And it should be a nice fit. Now, 
this is smooth and then we have a little hump as you may see here we have a little different elevation going on right here and there's probably one up on top oh not too bad so when we finish sludging our rivets in right through here we're going to take the file and we're going to eliminate that hump and make that smooth because we may want to run the chain this way and it'll get hung up and that's not cool or it may come back this way no big deal but we we're going to smooth that straight out you want to make sure you have a good fit all right now we're going to take our little rivets and put those right in there and i am trying my best with one hand here there's one there's two and there's the third all right so now i'm going to hold both ends and flip this over and we don't want to lose those rivets all right we didn't lose them <clears throat> as you can see we kind of have that standing up you want this to be flush, so it'd be good to have it level. And I have it leveled with a couple blocks here. Maybe it's a little bit higher. Something hard surface. And then we're going to just take the hammer and start giving it a good old couple whacks. As you can see, we're getting down there and it's becoming nice and smooth. And you're gonna do that on all three. I'm gonna pause the video for myself, but we'll pick up and you're gonna see how it is in a few seconds. It's done. All right, so let's zoom in here and see what we got. We still have a little bit, a couple divots in here, no big deal. The f finger should be somewhat smooth across it. Kind of almost the same with the others, and that feels about a little bit higher, but it's not too shabby. Let's slide this over and give it a wiggle test. Well, I don't feel any play. That's awesome. There's a couple things to keep in mind before you even want to think about replacing the nose. I mean, this bar today is probably over $100 right around that range. The nose itself, like we said, is about 20 bucks. And uh, you're, you're almost quarter of the cost of a new bar. That's up to you. But some of the deciding factors that you need to know is, is this still perpendicular and flush? Is this bar still good? Does it have any, uh, you know, problems with it? One of the ways you can check is if you can stand it up and it can stay like this, you're good. All right. Let's switch it around on the other side with the name with us. Here we go. And it's good. Doesn't need any support. Doesn't need any help. The channels are clean and clear. You're looking straight down it. And it looks fairly no pinch points, no problems or nothing. When you get to the nose with the sprocket, it should line straight up like that. Beautiful. Keep in mind, I don't have this, I don't have this uh, clamped down, so I'm still touching this, and it's still pretty good. That's how you know if you're pretty good with your whole thing, and you can just run it across and feel it and say, "Wow, that that's holding really nice." The next step that I'm going to do, and oh yeah, I can I can feel that as we look at it. And let me get my little pointer here. You can see that we still have a little bit of a lip and it's going to get caught. And same story right here. Not by much. Mm, that, that photo feels much better than what actually I feel. And right there. So we're just going to take a good old mill file and file that down. And at the end of the day, we're good to go. I, I got a couple questions from people about replacement of nose sprockets, which company is good, which company isn't. Um, I, I go with OEM. For the amount of money that 
it costs extra. We're only talking, it's a few bucks. But I, I feel that I don't have the time or the patience to talk to a customer to tell them why someone got hurt, why I'm, I'm down and out for something silly. Just an added frustration just to save a few pennies uh, or a few bucks. It, it's just, it's not worth it for me. I needed to work and I needed to do a job. So that's why I went with the OEM style. Um, I'm sorry, I'm playing with it as I'm talking to you. But that's that's it. If you have any other questions, let me know. Uh, if you're one of the lucky ones who uh, zap me a text, hey, feel free. Um, I'm willing to answer anything I can do to help anyone. But uh, that's a short, quick video on how to replace a sprocket on the nose. And I hope that helps maybe the ones who don't know if they can do it on their own or thinking about it or how long it takes because sometimes these saw shops will take a while to put something on because they're just so over overloaded with other work that they may not have the time to put one on or I don't even know what they charge to put one on but anyways as always keep your saws sharp and be safe